Hello and welcome to Charts. Today we're looking at the various designs of the QE2 Sovereigns in anticipation of the new 2022 Sovereigns which are expected to feature the Royal Coat of Arms in place of the now iconic Pastrucci George and the Dragon design. The Sovereign is Britain's most popular gold coin and is probably the most famous gold bullion coin both historically and globally. First struck in 1817, the Sovereign was widely acclaimed for both its attractive design, usefulness and its durability. Bearing the portrait of George III, it was the reverse design that stole the show. Set within a wide garter with the inscription, On Issoir qui mal y pense, Benedetto Pistrucci's dramatic engraving of St George and the Dragon has become synonymous with the Gold Sovereign. In 1821, the garter was removed and the image of St George and the Dragon was enlarged on the coin's surface. Pastrucci's classic design of St George with a short sword in one hand and the reins in the other, mounted upon a horse rearing over a slain dragon has stood the test of time and is still featured on Sovereigns today. Most of the Queen Elizabeth II Sovereigns feature Pastrucci's iconic image, although there have been some alternate designs to the reverse of the coin and even some to the obverse. Mary Gillick's famous engraving was featured on all UK coins between 1953 and 1967, with the design having beaten 16 others to the press. Despite suffering from arthritis in her later years, Mary continued to work on various royal commissions with her iconic first portrait of Elizabeth still being used on Monday money to this day. This was not only Elizabeth's first portrait to be displayed on coinage, but also Gillick's first work on a coin which earned her an OBE for her efforts in celebration of Elizabeth II's coronation. Designed by artist Arnold Makin, the second portrait was released with the introduction of the new 5 and 10 pence decimalisation coins in 1968. This bust displays the Queen wearing the gals of Great Britain and Ireland tiara. This tiara had been a wedding gift to the Queen from her grandmother Queen Mary in 1947. Thank you for watching. When if these you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it. And us. They were not universally popular, and the Royal Mint failed to sell out of its entire issue limit. To date, with our new releases this and more precious coins, was so content. different, and many people expected and wanted the familiar St. George and Dragon design. The reverse of the coin mirrors its 500 year old original counterpart. The Royal Arms Shield is surmounted by the Royal Crown. Both of these images are superimposed upon a double Tudor rose. The obverse features a representation of the Queen at her coronation. She is seated facing on a throne and is holding the scepter with a cross and the rod with the dove. Both the reverse and the obverse of the designs were created by the sculptor Bernard Sindal. On the 8th of August 1984, the Queen approved two new designs for use on United Kingdom coinage that was to be used from the 1st of January 1985 one for circulating coins and one for large commemorative issues. Selected from 38 models submitted by 17 artists, both are the work of sculptor Raphael McClouf. McClouf came to the United Kingdom after the Second World War and at 16 became a student at the Camberwell School of Art where he remained until 1958. For the next 10 years, he lectured in sculpture at a number of schools of art, including Camberwell, and in 1979 was elected an associate of the Royal Society of British Sculptors. In 1977, he became a Fellow of the Royal Society for the Encouragement of Art, Manufactures and Commerce. His work has been exhibited widely both home and abroad, including the Royal Academy in London. The fourth portrait features a design by Ian Rank Broadley, who began studying at the Epsom School of Art before progressing onto the Slade School of Fine Art, graduating in 1976. The design took cues from historical artists and there was an immediate contrast with the portrait's predecessor with the artist taking a far more realistic approach and saying that there was no need to disguise the matureness of the Queen's years. Responsible for what has often been hailed as the definitive representation of Queen Elizabeth II, renowned international artist and product designer at the Royal Mint, Jodie Clark produced a regal depiction that will go on to feature on over 2.7 billion UK coins to date. Taking two weeks to create the submitted design, Jodie settled for a warm expression, revealing a new side to the regal figure whilst paying homage to a milestone of becoming the longest reigning monarch in British history by showing Elizabeth II adorning her coronation crown. 
In anticipation of the 2022 Sovereign and Proof Sovereign releases, our director Lawrence sat down with CoinTuber Christopher Collex to talk about some of the designs we've seen on Elizabethan Sovereigns and what we can expect on the new coins. So, we're, uh, we're showing uh, Christopher some pound coins. They're actually gold sovereigns, but they're pound coins. Mm -hmm. And the reason we're showing these is because there's a new design coming out next year. A new, probably one-off, one-year design. Um, at the minute, um, if you ask the Royal Mint, it's almost secret. Uh, but what happens with coin designs is the Queen's Privy Council makes announcements and actually approves coin designs. So that information goes out into the public domain. And earlier this year, uh, we were very interested to read one of them, which was talking about a new design which would have the royal coat of arms on it and this would be a new one-off design um, it doesn't say on the Privy Council notices um, what date's going to go on the coin or it, sometimes it doesn't and in this case it doesn't uh, but um, putting two and two together we think we got to four and we think this new design is for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee in 2022 and uh, we know it's going to be a royal coat of arms. Um, that's subject to interpretation because there are different versions or different interpretations of the royal coat of arms. Um, so what we thought we'd do is go through the, the designs that have been on Elizabeth II coins so far. We start here, 1989. Um, in fact, we're jumping back in time because this was done for the 500th anniversary of the first gold sovereign, which was struck for Henry VII ah. in 1489. If we flick this over, you'll see the Queen in a throne looking rather majestic mm. and looking very sovereign, ah. which is how the gold sovereign got its name, from the portrayal of Henry VII on his magnificent gold sovereign over 500 years ago. And their gold sovereigns then were twice the size of the ones, twice the weight of the ones we've got now. I see. Which is even more impressive. So. Mm -hmm. There we go, that's um, jumping back. What have we got now? Then the, I think the Roman was so happy that the, the one-off year design uh, worked well. So in 2002, they did another uh, one-off design. Here we can see it, and this is uh, a royal shield. Mm -hmm. uh, we flick it over. This goes back to um, to a more normal portrait of the mm -hmm. queen. Now, who's this one by? This, this Ian, is Ian, Ian Rank Broadley. Broadley, isn't it? This one, yeah. Anyway, that's that. That was um, a one-off year design. And then in 2005, the, the mint thought, well, oh, those sold well. We'll do it again. Not yes. Here's another one, 2005, and this is a kind of modernistic, mm. stylistic St. George and the Dragon. Some people didn't like it. I think it's very nice. Yeah, and I it, agree with you. I yeah. think it's lovely. And it, it's good to have different designs thrown in. It keeps keeps things interesting and mm -hmm. fresh. Um, and uh, you know, if opinions differ, well, that's good. Yeah. We can always have uh, discussions. Very subjective, isn't it? Yeah. But I think it's a lovely coin. Yeah, that's that one. And the next one is a, a proof, again, the normal St. George and the Dragon. But let's flip it over. And what we got on that side? Oh, Ooh. we've got a different portrait. Yeah. So a different portrait for 2017. Now, why had that got a different portrait on it? Mm. Um, you know, I'm supposed to know where. But at least that's the, the normal St. George and the Dragon on yeah, it. Yeah, it looks odd with having off-center, doesn't it? It does, yeah. It's interesting that you say odd because normally they are quite central. I mm. think it's quite nice that it's off centre in creative yeah. space. Yeah, so that was a kind of one off one. And this is 2012. And this goes back to um, a different kind of St. George and the Dragon. This would have been better as a proof one, but we happen to have picked a, a so called bullion version out. Mm -hmm. Still nice. It's good that it's um, it's a different design of it. So that's another one-off 
pattern or design for the year. Mm -hmm. What have we got next? Oh yeah, 2017. Now this looks ordinary. In fact, this looks a bit small, but it's because of the capsules hiding a little bit of it. Um, but this was a kind of um, throwback or whatever. It's a bit cartwheely, like a cartwheel. It's yeah. It's for the centenary of the 1817. A centi by centenary, can't do math, of the 1817, which was the first date of the modern sovereigns. Ah. And this is, go, let's just have a look. We'll take this out. Oh, we don't want to get any dust on this, but that has got a garter around it, and can we get that in focus? Yeah. Can we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the garter. What does the garter say on it? Uh, is it Latin? Is it um, is it Oni Swaki Mali Pont on the garter of these? That looks like it, that right? Yeah. Like it. Yeah. You think that might be? I was Latin. about to say that. You said, well, you know. Funny you should say that because the Royal <laughs> Mint published something that said that uh, that said that the motto on the garter on this coin, Oni Swaki Mali Pont, with Latin for evil be to he who, he who evil thinks thereof, and it isn't. It's French. Oh. But what was I supposed to be talking about? There's a new sovereign coming out. Well, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you knew that, folks. I'd forgotten. <laughs> That's what age does to you. Um, yeah, the the new design that was announced in the Privy Council notice in June, June the 24th this year, said um, that the new design would feature the royal coat of arms, and that would be for the quintuple sovereign, the five pound coin, the double sovereign, two pound coin, the sovereign, and the half sovereign. Didn't mention the quarter sovereign. That got its own mention on a separate um, separate notice. Um, and that was about all the notice said. Didn't say what it was for. We've done some what, imagining, or if you like. Uh, we, we got um, uh, a good uh, illustration of the well, the Queen's royal coat of arms because every monarch has a different royal coat of arms and uh, our Queen had her own um, and we actually showed what that would like on a coin uh, we can show you photos of that it does look a little bit fussy and a bit full on a coin although I think it would work uh, there have been um, interpretations of it on a one ounce gold coin um, a while back by Timothy Node and it was also done on a circulation pound coin I think I'm right and I think there's a gold proof version of that pound coin that's a lot to remember you know <laughs> um, but um, as far as the Royal Mint's concerned this new design and what it's for is more or less top secret we think that the proof versions of the coins will be issued uh, possibly later this month, possibly November, ahead of, of next year. They'll be dated next year, we think. So there's a little bit of uncertainty here. One thing we don't know about yet is whether there'll be a bullion version of the Royal Coat of Arms Sovereign as well, or whether it'll just be a proof one. If it's a proof one, then Sovereign Collectors will have to buy two coins, won't they? Mm. A proof one and a definitive one, and maybe a proof version of the definitive one, and all that will help the Royal Mint sales. So um, we'll, we'll find out what's going to happen fairly soon. Watch this space. Yeah, well, thank you for showing me and the viewers all these different Sovereigns. It's fascinating to see. You're welcome. And it's been really nice to have you up there. That's been great We've fun. We've learnt things from you, how to sort yeah. out 50 pence is mainly. We've taught you about <laughs> pound coins. So once again, this was Christopher with Christopher Collects. I was Lawrence Chard from Chard Coins. I, I probably still am Lawrence Chard from Chard Coins. Thank you for watching. You know what to do if you like this video, don't you? Bye for now. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel and keep up to date with our new releases and more precious metal content.